The most basic expectation of an actor is that they can manage to stay in character for the duration of a take that makes it into the final cut of the film. But sometimes that just ain't what happens. Sometimes actors briefly slip out of character for a few scant moments, laughing when they're not supposed to, typically called corpsing in the business, or simply doing something their character absolutely should not be. They're only human folks. But I am Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 times actors broke character in movies. Number 10, Johnny Knoxville, The Ringer. Midway through the criminally underrated sports comedy, The Ringer, Johnny Knoxville finds himself unable to maintain his composure when one of his co-stars drops one of the film's most gut-bustingly memorable one-liners. Lynn's partner David spins a lie that he took Steve and his special Olympian pals to the mall for ice cream. At which point Winston shouts, when the F did we get ice cream? As Jeffrey Aaron fires off the quip, keep your eyes on Knoxville, who promptly cracks up laughing. Apparently because the line was improvised by Aaron on the spot. With that in mind, you can't really blame him, can you? And yet the line is so hilarious that director Barry W. Blostein decided to include it anyway, no matter that Knoxville technically blew the take. Thankfully, seeing him thoroughly lose it only makes it even funnier. Now what's your favorite improvised moment in a movie? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 9. Peter Bull, Dr. Strangelove Let's be honest here. Even the best actor in the world would struggle to keep a straight face when they're three feet away from Peter Sellers doing career best riffing. But in the case of actor Peter Bull, it was certainly a heroic effort all the same. Bull plays Soviet ambassador Alexei D. Sadesky. And during the scene where Dr. Strangelove suffers from a bout of alien hand syndrome, Sellers decides to just do whatever the hell he wants, including repeatedly smacking his non-compliant hand. At this point, Bull, who has clearly been holding in a laugh for the entire scene, can keep it at bay no longer, letting out a sizable smirk for a few seconds. And despite Stanley Kubrick's noted penchant for perfectionism, he mercifully didn't request another take. Or perhaps simply didn't notice until he was in the editing room. Either way, it's still in there. Number 8. John Ashton, Beverly Hills Cop It won't surprise anyone to learn that Eddie Murphy's funny man hijinks caused a ton of flub takes for his co-stars and wasted a whole ton of film during the production of Beverly Hills Cop. And one near miss actually made it into the final film. When Axel Foley is spinning his memorable super cop story to Lieutenant Bogomil, check out Sergeant Taggart rubbing his temples and pinching the bridge of his nose, in a desperate attempt not to laugh and ruin the take. The beauty of this quick thinking by Ashton is that it still sort of makes sense for the character, that the gruff Taggart is basically pinching his nose in exasperation at the absurdity of Foley's story and how unlikely Bogomil is to buy it. Apparently, Murphy and Ashton's scene partner, Judge Reinhold, meanwhile opted to tightly pinch his thigh to prevent himself from laughing. Whatever works, eh? Number 7. Chris Hemsworth, The Avengers Perhaps the single most memorable credit scene in the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe comes at the end of The Avengers, when the thoroughly knackered heroes are shown getting some well-earned shawarma, just as Tony Stark recommended in the film's closing moments. The comedy of the scene is derived from the fact that the heroes are completely exhausted from saving the world and don't have the energy to do anything but chow down on their food in silence, each of them adopting completely flat, effect-devoid facial expressions. That is, except for Chris Hemsworth's Thor, who for a brief moment near the end of the scene turns his head towards Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner and can't help but let out a sneaky smirk. It's easily missed. But for a fleeting moment, Hemsworth betrays the we're too tired to even emote vibe that the rest of the scene has. Given that this scene was shot last minute though, literally the day after the world premiere, it's safe to say that the crew probably didn't have too long to get it in the can. Number 6. Whoopi Goldberg, Sister Act Whoopi Goldberg may be a damn pro, but even she has her limits and evidently could not resist losing it in front of the legendary Dame Maggie Smith while filming a scene in Sister Act. When Reverend Mother gives Dolores a dressing down for supposedly corrupting the church's choir with her unorthodox ways, there's a sudden knock at the door, and a flummoxed mother loudly shouts, Come in! In what can best be described as a high-pitched grunt. Given that Goldberg clearly wasn't expecting such a strange loud sound to be expelled from Smith's vocal cords, and Smith probably wasn't either, she finds herself unable to keep fully in character, abruptly lifting her hands to her mouth as she tries to prevent herself from completely breaking. 
Thankfully, this came at the natural end of the shot before it cuts to the door opening. In turn, ensuring that it was still usable, and Smith's unexpected bleating wasn't forced to remain on the cutting room floor. Just a quick one to say thanks for tapping on this video today, folks. And hit that subscribe button down below for more What Culture videos in your life. Number 5. Jeremy Irons Dungeons & Dragons We truly don't deserve the magnificence of Jeremy Irons hamming it up for the cheap seats in 2000's otherwise abysmal Dungeons & Dragons film. As the evil mage Profion, Irons makes an art out of no toss given line reads, where if he chewed any more of the scenery up, there'd literally be nothing left to shoot the damn thing on. Irons is clearly having a ton of fun with the role, which was by his own admission a pure paycheck part to pay for a castle he'd just bought. Yet Irons ultimately has such a whale of a time that he ends up gloriously losing grip of the fierce evil with a capital E character he's supposed to be playing. Late in the film, Irons fires off the unforgettable line, Let their blood rain from the sky! But in the final second or so of the shot, Irons' mugging turns to grinning laughter. The legendary actor seemingly unable to contain how unseriously he's taking the job any longer. Number 4. Mike Starr and Jeff Daniels – Dumb and Dumber Perhaps the single most unforgettable moment in Dumb and Dumber occurs when Lloyd subjects Hitman Mental and best pal Harry to the most annoying sound in the world. And boy, the resulting screeching sound sure is. As it turns out, the gag was improvised by Jim Carrey during shooting. And if you look closely at both Mike Starr and Jeff Daniels, they are struggling not to laugh their asses off. Starr screws his face up in a way which can at least be interpreted as frustration. But Daniels is very clearly corpsing as Carrey lets out his insanely grating racket. A moment later, the shot cuts to Mental looking decidedly more upset about the situation. And that's that. While it wouldn't have been remotely out of character for Daniels Harry to start laughing at his pal's grating outburst, it seems clear that he wasn't supposed to start cackling in that moment, but just could not resist. Number 3. This Extra – Meet the Parents Instead of an A-list actor now, we've got a background artist who proved themselves the single person unable to avoid corpsing in this heavily populated shot. Near the end of Meet the Parents, Greg has an altercation with an air stewardess while boarding a plane and professes that he'll only check his oversized luggage if she manages to pry it from his hands. Greg says, If you can get it from my kung fu grip, then you can have it. At which moment an extra on Ben Stiller's far left can be seen cracking up and quickly burying his head below the plane's seat in an attempt not to ruin the tank. I mean, the guy is easily noticeable and all, but at least it's contextually plausible that a plane passenger might find what Greg's saying funny. Props to the other extras sat closer to Stiller who remain positively stone-faced throughout though. Pros, the lot of them. Number 2. Ewan McGregor – Star Wars Episode 3 – Revenge of the Sith You can't really blame the cast of the Star Wars prequels for struggling to keep a straight face and maintain their character given some of the utterly risible dialogue they were forced to tear through. And in Ewan McGregor's case, one of his breaks ended up making it into the final cut of Episode 3 – Revenge of the Sith. When Obi-Wan informs Padme that he's seen a security hologram of Anakin killing younglings. Younglings in this context being Jedi Padawans, if you didn't know. Now, it must be said that having Obi-Wan use the dead silly word younglings in the middle of an extremely serious description of child murder is pretty poor writing on George Lucas's part. And McGregor apparently thought much the same, as when he delivers the line read, he's visibly struggling not to bust up laughing. McGregor, ever the vet, takes a sharp breath with a dead-eyed look that says, am I really about to say this? Before lifting his hand to cover his mouth as he desperately tries to stifle a laugh. Nobody could possibly blame you for this, Ewan. Number 1. James Franco – This Is The End Though This Is The End seems like a pretty fast and loose movie where characters are concerned, especially with the majority of the cast playing mildly exaggerated versions of themselves, James Franco does nevertheless betray himself during one brief scene. Almost halfway through the movie, Franco records a relatively somber video confessional where he complains about Danny McBride showing up at his house uninvited, just before McBride himself appears in the background and starts chatting to him. McBride eventually walks off, and if you look and listen closely, you can hear Franco start convulsing with laughter, instead of playing the scene straight as intended. At this moment, the video camera suddenly glitches, before Franco says, F that dude. 
The glitch was likely a sneaky way to cut between two takes in an attempt to conceal Franco breaking character. And it more or less works. But you can definitely spot Franco's slip-up if you're paying attention.